What's up guys, in this video we're going to learn how to use the merge sort algorithm to sort lists. The merge sort algorithm is a pretty intuitive one, and it runs with the worst case of n log n, with a space complexity of n, where n is the size of the list. So let's say we have a list that looks something like this. We have 2, 6, 7, 1, 3, 8, 5, 4. And we want to sort this in ascending order, and maybe even in descending order. So the way the merge sort algorithm works is the following. We basically split the array into a left half and a right half. And we recursively call this merge sort function on the left half and set it equal to some array. And we do the same with the right half and set that equal to some right array. And once we have those two halves, we basically merge them. So this is what we would call a divide and conquer approach. We're basically dividing up our problem into smaller subproblems, solving those subproblems and using the solutions of those to figure out our overall solution. So let's take a look at how this works in action. So we'll start by splitting our array into half. So from this, we're going to end up with two arrays where one is two, six, seven, one, and the other is three, eight, five, four. Now we're gonna split both of these in half once again. So this splits into two and six, and seven and one. And the second array splits into three and eight, and five and four. And then we'll do one more split. So we'll split this into two, we'll make that two and six, we'll make this seven and one, I'm sorry, seven separately and then one separately. And then we'll split this into three and eight. And then we'll split this into five and four. Well, at this point, we can't actually split these any bit further because all of these arrays have length one. So here's what we're gonna do. This is where we do the merge part of it. We've split these arrays into single arrays, and now we're going to merge every consecutive pair. So for example, we're gonna merge these two, we're gonna merge these two, we're gonna merge these two, and these two. And when we merge those back together, we're going to merge them in a sorted order. And so likewise, once we do that, these two should be sorted, these two should be sorted, and so we'll merge this and this, and we'll merge this and this. And so previously we went top to bottom, and now we're working bottom up. So let's see how that works. So we'll merge the first pair back together, two and six, and we'll keep it in that order, because that is in a sorted order, so we don't have to do anything about it. Next, we'll look at seven and one. Well, seven is greater than one, so we'll actually switch those. So we'll do one and seven. So we'll essentially be merging them in a different order. And now we have three and eight. So let's put those two back together. They're already in a sorted order, so we don't have to do anything. And then we'll put these last two together. So these will have to swap the first values of each array. So we'll have four and five. All right, so that may not have been too intuitive, but this next step will really show how this merge part of the algorithm is really helpful. So let's look at the next two pair. So we're merging these two, two and six and one and seven. So when we merge them, we want to make sure that we merge it in a sorted order. So what we do is we always look at the first element in each of the lists. We always compare the first two elements and whichever one is less than the other, if we're doing ascending order, whichever one is less than the other is going to be added first to the bigger array. So we have a bigger array and we compare one and two. Well, one is less than two, so we'll put one first and then we'll move on to the next one. So now we're comparing two and seven. Well, two is less, so two will go next. And now we're comparing six and seven. Six is less, so that'll go. And now we only have seven left in the other array, so we can just add that. All right, so that's that array. Let's look at the next two. So we'll look at merging these. And so first we compared three and four. Well, three is less than four, so we'll put three first, and we'll take that out of the smaller array. Now we're comparing eight and four. Well, four is less, so we'll put four here, and now we'll compare eight and five. In this case, five is less, so we'll add that here. And now we only have eight in that left pair. And so here we can just add it right away. So we add it. All right, now comes the final merge. So we have the array one, two, six, seven, and three, four, five, eight. So let's put these two together. So we start off with comparing one and three. Well, one is less than three. So we'll go one first. And I'll actually mark these off as we go. So we've already done one, so we'll mark that off. All right, next we're comparing two and three. Well, two is less than three, so two will go next. And we'll mark that off as well. 
Now we're comparing 6 and 3. Well, 3 is less than 6, so we'll put 3 next. And we'll mark that off in the other array. Next, we're comparing 4 and 6. Well, 4 is less, so we'll put that next. And we'll mark it off. Next, we have 5 and 6. Well, 5 is less, so we'll add that there. And we'll mark that off. And now we're comparing 6 and 8. So we'll put 6 here, and we'll mark that one off. And finally, we're comparing 7 and 8. Well, 7 is less, so we'll put that there, and we'll mark off 7. And now we only have 8 remaining in the other array. So we can just add that and mark that off. And with that, we have a sorted array. So that's very efficient. That works in n log n time complexity. Now, the space complexity of this is going to be a worst case of n. And the reason for that is because we have to create an entirely new array whenever we're merging back together. There are optimized merge sorts that help to reduce the space complexity a bit, but they do come at a bit of a cost for the time complexity. So with that, let's take a look at how to code this. We can start our Python code by defining our merge sort function. Let's call it merge sort. So we'll say def merge sort. And we only have to pass in two parameters. Well, really only one, but the second is optional if you want your function to be able to sort in ascending or descending order. So we'll put r to represent our array, and then comp, which is our comparison function. When we actually call this, we'll put in a function that determines whether one element is less than another, or we can always flip this and put if one element is greater than another. So we have that, and let's go into the body of the function. So the first step is splitting our array. Now, before we actually split the array, we have to check the length of the array, because if we only have one element, we saw that we could no longer split it in half. So let's check that. If length of array is less than or equal to one, then we just return, no need to run the following code. If that's not the case, now we can actually perform the splitting part of the merge sort. So that's where we do the recursive call to merge sort. So we'll call for the left side, we'll say merge sort, and then we'll use a new walrus operator to say left is assign equal, to r, and then we'll just take the left half. So that's using array or using list slicing. We can say r colon length of array, floor divide two, just to make sure that we have an integer. And we'll also pass in that comparison function, so comp. And we should do this with the right side as well. We'll say merge sort, and we'll create right assign equals r length of r, floor divide two, and then we'll take the rest of it. And of course, we need our comp function here. Now, if you're doing this in Python, where the version is less than 3.8, you won't actually have access to this walrus operator. So one thing you can do is, in this case, we'll just comment this out, move it down, and we'll just assign left is equal to r at colon length of r, floor divide two. And so that way we have access to that reference. And then we can just remove this from here and just run this on left. Because our merge sort function is not gonna return anything, it's going to run in place. So that's one option, but because we have the walrus operator, it just makes things a bit more concise. So we'll stick to that. So I'll remove these two lines and uncomment that, and let's move on. So now that we finished the splitting part of this algorithm, we need to merge the left and right arrays. So to do that, we need to create three variables, a, b, and x, and we'll set them all equal to zero. So a is going to represent the current index that we're looking at in the left array, b is going to represent the current index that we're looking at in the right array, and x is going to represent the current index in that overall array variable. And we're setting these all to zero just because we're starting from the beginning. So here's the first loop that we do. We say while a is less than the length of left and while b is less than the length of right, this is just checking to make sure that we can actually access both indices or both elements at those respective indices in those arrays, meaning that we haven't already looked through the entire half. So if that's the case, we need to compare the two. So if comp left a and right b, then we can say that array x is equal to left a. And we can increment a, a plus equals one. And so this is basically saying that because this satisfied this particular Boolean, we are assigning the element that's currently at that index a to whatever index is x at the array r. And then we increment a by one. And otherwise, we want to assign the value at the respective index of b in the right array. So we'll say rx is equal to right b, and b plus equals one. And irrespective of what happens here, we are always going to want to increment x by one. So x plus equals one. All right, next, after this loop ends, 
either one of these arrays will be empty. But if one of the arrays is empty, the other might still have elements. So we want to make sure that we have already added all of the elements from both halves because we don't want to miss out on any. So we'll say while a is less than the length of left. So if it does have any elements, this loop will run. We'll say r of x is equal to left a, and we'll increment both a and x by 1. a plus equals 1, x plus equals 1. We'll do the same with the right side. So while b is less than the length of right, we'll say that r x is equal to right b, and we'll increment both b and x by 1. b plus equals 1, x plus equals 1. And that's all we have to do for our merge sort function. OK, so let's test this out with the example we came up with earlier. So we'll say that r is equal to 2, 6, 7, 1, 3, 8, 5, 4. And now we can run the merge sort function on this. So we'll say merge sort r. And our comparison is going to be a function that determines whether the left is less than the right. So we'll say lambda l r. And we'll compare these two elements. l is less than r. So if this is the case, this is actually going to be fed into line 7. So if left is less than right, that means that we're going to run this body of code. Otherwise, we'll run this body of code. And so this means that we are going to be sorting in ascending order. And of course, we can always make this greater than r so that we can sort in descending order. But let's first check ascending order. So we'll put less than. And finally, we can print the array that we sort. So print r. All right, nice. So now that we have created our function and created a test unit, let's run this and see what happens. So we'll go up here, we can just click this run button. And we can see that our list is sorted in the correct order. And we can always invert the order so we can make a descending order, we can just change the sign from less than to greater than, and we'll run the same thing. And now we get it in reverse order. So that's the merge sort algorithm in Python. Thanks for watching, and I hope this was helpful.